Right now, though, to talk attack ads and what Labor's up to and how National might respond, we are joined by uh, National MP, Shadow Leader of the House, uh, Chris Bishop. Chris, welcome to the program. Nice to have you on the platform. G'day, Sean. It's good to be here, and um, I think it's my first time on. So it is. It. it is indeed. Um, we'd like to get your leader on at some stage too. He seems a bit reluctant. Oh, I'm sure we can make that happen. He's bloody busy at the moment, though. He's up around the country. He's too busy to speak to the people, Chris. Too busy to speak to the people. Hey, let's get into it. These oh, I'm are... sure he'll be on at some point. Now, are these... I looked at them up and he said, oh, there are all these attack ads out. Mm, would you call them attack ads? Uh, well, some people would. I mean, they're definitely having a go at, um, at Christopher Luxon personally. There's no doubt about that. And, look, I think the basic point is Labor feel very threatened by him. Um, you know, if you look at the, the polls, um, you know, we're ahead of Labor uh, on most public polls for, you know, the first time in, let's face it, quite a while, which is good news for us uh, and the centre-right more broadly. And I think they're quite worried by it. OK. And, and you know you're doing no well when your opposition is ahead of you and completely ghosting and ignoring you. That is the most frustrating thing in politics, isn't it? Yeah, well, look, I mean, for Labor, right, they've had, um, you know, they've had three years or so of a pretty comfortable lead in the polls, uh, but, you know, very little to actually show for it in government. I mean, every metric that they've chosen to measure themselves by is worse. I mean, I just think about my own area, the State House waiting list, they said they'd fix it. It's gone up by 500% in the last... Yeah, uh, 27,000 people waiting for, for housing. Yeah, it's a shocker. And, you know, remember, it, it, Labor came to office saying, well, look, you know, Labor, Na National don't care about this and we'll fix it. They said, you know, let's do this. Um, but they didn't just didn't tell anyone that let's doing this, you know, would mean um, making everything worse when it comes to housing. Um, child poverty is worse than it was five years ago. Um, you know, almost everything they choose to... You know, but mind you, we have cool. had, we have had, Chris, and I, I hate to mention it, we have had a global pandemic and massive economic disruption and supply chain disruption. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. And But, you know, um, at some point the government's going to have to stop blaming everything and everyone other than themselves for things that they said they would fix. So, you know, Megan Woods uh, still yesterday talking about National's record on housing. Well, OK. Um, yep, we can talk about what happened between 08 and 17, but at some point you have to front up and take some accountability because you're in government now. You've had five years, and by the time of the next election, they'll have had six years. Uh, and actually, Kiwis expect to see some measurable and demonstrable improvements, and at the moment they're not seeing that, and there's a real lack of delivery from the government, and I think people are worried about that, and that's why you're starting to see a bit of a drift back towards national. All right, a drift back. That's not very positive, Chris. Well, you know, the, the numbers are, are slowly ticking up, uh, which is fantastic, and you know, it's just a it's just a drag race now until the uh, election in October, November uh, next year, whenever it is. And you know, we'll be putting our best foot forward, and I'm feeling really excited about it. Will you? Or will you be putting your safest foot forward? Because a lot of commented commenters, and you know that I talk to the commentators, a lot of people who are armchair critics and up and down the country, and they say it looks like National has decided it will leave it to Labor to lose the election on the issues that you've just run through and a generally ailing economy and rising cost of living, and you're not really going to stand it for anything. It's just going to be, oh, we could do better than them. We won't stuff it up as much as they do. Is that your strategy, to play it safe and let them lose, rather than actually, as some would say, providing strong, principled leadership and offering a true alternative? I think you'll see from us a very strong alternative vision and government for New Zealand. Uh, and, you know, we've announced quite a few things already uh, just in the last Name three of so. them. Name the top three of those quite a few things. Well, if you just state my housing uh, area, for example, we, we have said we will very quickly move to repeal the interest deductibility uh, changes, which the government were told... Would Tax break for landlords. How does rate. that solve, solve the housing crisis? Well, at the, the government were told by the officials, if you uh, remove interest deductibility, which applies to every other sector of the economy, by the way, every other business sector, yep. uh, it will. if you remove it, it will put pressure on rent and therefore it will literally increase the state house waiting list. They okay. went ahead and did it anyway and look what's happened to the state house waiting list. All right, OK, we, that's one. We, we, give us, we, give we, us another. We will, we will reverse the, um, the extension of the Bright Line test, which Labor's pushed out to 10 years. Uh, and is essentially a capital gains tax uh, by stealth. We will repeal that and put, take it down uh, to two years. 
uh, again, sort of going back to what we had uh, under national, okay. uh, and we'll repeal, you know, we'll repeal three waters, for example. We've been very clear about that, which uh, you know is causing great consternation around the. Community. Do you reckon they're ever uh, going to get that across the line before the election, though, Chris? Three waters. Well, I was talking to, talking to a few people the other day who reckon a bill is on the way, but you know you probably see it. they have been saying that for about a year or so. Uh, so let's wait and see. Um, but you know they're very determined to, to press ahead with that. Well, you know we are going to repeal that and replace it with something else. So you know, those are just three examples, and that's just in you know mm-hmm. one and a half. Where years. are you on on the idea of hipua pua co governance um, and the broader issue of where the treaty sits in in New Zealand? New Zealand's constitutional and governmental arrangements? Well, look, I think we have to have a a mature conversation around it. And part of the problem is it's impossible to actually know uh, what the government is proposing and what the government is talking about. So people sort of throw around terms like co-governance and there's that Hapuapua report, obviously. Uh, But there's a real lack of clarity from government about exactly what they mean. Uh, And they seem to have just sort of chucked it all into the two hard basket and you know, left it over to Willie Jackson to figure it out. Well, that doesn't really inspire confidence, uh, to be honest. So it's time that the Prime Minister uh, showed some, um, you know, you, you went up there and fronted up and then started to talk about exactly what it means and what they think it means. OK. Um, what about these issues around Nanaia Mahuta and her family? Yeah, we're asking some uh, questions around that. Um, you know, clearly I've seen some of the commentary uh, and seen some of the reporting um, that, that you uh, have done and Annie's done. Um, so we, we are asking some uh, some questions around that through the parliamentary uh, process, through the written question uh, mechanism. Simeon Brown's um, put those through, and you know there is clearly a perception issue there that needs to be investigated, and we are doing that. Mm. It strikes me, and we've talked about it on the platform, Chris, that actually, and you've said quite clearly, and I know David Seymour and others have, we need to have meaningful debate and conversations around these issues. Isn't it the truth, though, and we highlighted a story on TV1 uh, quoting uh, an outfit called the Disinformation Project, which claimed an uptick in online racism, that as soon as a politician like yourself or Mr Luxon um, raises issues like that, someone somewhere in government or in a government-backed propaganda organisation is going to scream racist at you. Well, I think it's really important that we discuss issues without fear nor favour. And, um, you know, there's there's clearly a perception issue with um, Minister Mahuta's um, uh, various, um, uh, well, the, her family dealings. Um, and, you know, I just think about if National uh, was in government, there would be, and, and a senior National Minister uh, had a sort of web of uh, family links in and around the government and um, contracts and things like that, uh, Labor would be asking questions of National, and that would be the right thing to do. They certainly did, you know, for example, in relation to Judith Collins and Oravita. People may forget, but uh, Pansy Wong back in 2010 as well, I suspect you remember, but, but others may not, but that there were issues well, I remember around, Duncan uh, that, McIntyre so. back in 1980. Well, uh, well, your memory's longer than mine. Oh, righty well, I, I wasn't alive, but... Um, <laughs> Um, my political my political history uh, little uh, senses are going off, and I, I remember that. That's the marginal land. Uh, Lands board uh, investigated. He was cleared, but it kind of stuffed his career. Yeah, yeah, it did back in the back in nineteen eighty. So the old Mald- Maldon days. So you know, I mean, the, the point is, um, we're we're very lucky in New Zealand. We have a very uh, you know non corrupt country, and there's massive openness and transparency in comparison to other countries. Mm. But that doesn't mean we always get everything right, and it means that when things like this crop up, you have to ask the questions, and that's actually right and proper in a democracy, and so we, we are doing exactly But do that. you and feel uh, you are right. free to do so? I get the feeling, as someone who's observed politics for a while, there is a fear of being, having, I don't know, the finger of racism pointed at you guys, the fear of being piled on on social media, where, uh, could I say, your political opponents are pretty active. Look, I said, well, I mean, I can only speak for myself. I, I certainly don't uh, feel like that. And, uh, you know, we'll be asking the questions and let's wait and see what it crops up. But these things have to be investigated and done in the right way. All right. Look, the other thing is Prime Minister is winging home commercially. Uh, we might add because the plane's broken down, which happens to all Prime Ministers. How would you rate her trip to the US? I've been mean, looking. You'd have to say, uh, stepping back a little bit, it's been a, it's been a positive one. I mean, any engagement that a New Zealand Prime Minister can have with 
uh, the leader of the free world is a good one, obviously. Um, it's been about five years or so since we had a White House visit, uh, which, you know, is a good thing. Uh, and she looks like she's made some, um, you know, take, taken a trade delegation, obviously, with the business links. That's also really important. But the major point that I, I hope that she stressed to um, President Biden and, and the other senior leaders she met was that it, it's really important the US is engaged in the Pacific. Um, and um, I, I know that uh, that's, that's been an area that uh, you know New Zealand has been talking to the US about for a while, and I, I hope and I'm, I'm sure that that point was stressed. Yeah, it feels, Chris, like we are suddenly in some ways on the almost on the front line of the geopolitical kind of power play here, aren't we? Well, I think uh, if you go all the way back to uh, this is the Obama administration, that was one of the drivers for the uh, TPP. And just a real shame that that didn't get over the line for a variety of complicated reasons back in 2016. But, um, you know, like, it's funny you know, when you think about it. You know, Labor, Jacinda Ardern used to march up and down Queen Street saying, oh, we can't sign the TPP. You know, pretty much the first thing they did when they came to government was change the name, chuck, um, chuck two, uh, two names in front of it, became the CPTPP, uh, acronym SOUP. And, um, you know, she went around the world and signing it and talking about the benefits of free trade. So... You know, these things are, uh, yeah. are I guess the other uh, question, though, though, is I can remember Jim Bolger saying we are all Asian. Um, do, yeah. we need yeah, to, well, yeah. do we need to pick a side in this geopolitical conflict? And if we do need to pick a side, should we seriously look and say, China, man, they are our biggest trading partner. They are the rising power. Maybe it's time to say, you know, uh, bye-bye to uh, Uncle Sam. I think that's too uh, uh, binary a uh, distinction. Uh, New Zealand has an independent uh, foreign policy. Well, does we make our own decisions. Well, we might, well we we do, and we make our own uh, decisions. Uh, and you know, we we are an Asian country. You know, I remember Paul Keating saying in the early nineties, you know, Australia is fundamentally an Asian nation. And a lot of people criticised him for that, but I don't think you would see many people in Australia. Uh, disagree with that proposition now with the Asian supply chain. So you're chain saying New Zealand is an Asian country? Well, we, we are an Asia-Pacific nation. There's no there's no doubt about that. We have uh, the, the Pacific is our, is our family, um, but we also have deep ties into Asia. And if you just look, you know, literally where we are placed geographically in the world, uh, you know, we are part of the Asia-Pacific uh, or the Indo-Pacific, as um, we now seem to call it. So, yeah, can't deny it. All right. Um, what do you think we need to do... Um in relation to this, well, conflict, to this face-off, to this arm wrestle between China and America, where do we come down and what more do we need to do to be on the right side of history? Well, we have to just stay... I mean, it's not, look, it's not for me to, to uh, proffer too much of a comment. I'm not our foreign affairs spokesperson or our leader, but um, I, I just say we need to be true to our values. Uh, and um, if you stick to your values and your principles, you, you can't go too far wrong in life. Sean, that's what I've discovered. Well, so, um, well I thought the government, to... I thought Labor's principles were kindness and niceness, and then they do these nasty attack ads. Let's go back to that. How do you guys respond to them? Uh, and let's be honest, your supporters online and, you know, the general centre right to right can be pretty personally nasty about the Prime Minister. Um, do you respond in kind to ads attacking Chris Luxon? Or when they go low, do you go high? What's the strategy? Yeah, it's funny, isn't it, when you think about what happens online? I mean, there's nastiness all over the place. I mean, I get all sorts of abuse. I mean, you sure during do. The COVID, yeah. during, during the COVID period, I mean, you know, I would say, what I regard it as just you know, fairly sensible, non-controversial things, and um, people just pile on and I just tend to use the block button for the Billy on Twitter uh, or, or rather the mute button and I um, do the same thing on Facebook a little bit but look, there's a lot of online nastiness and I think people should all be a bit more civil to each other frankly um, but look you know the, the Labour attack ad on Christopher Lux is, you know frankly it's pretty mild in the grand scheme of things uh, and you know I just think it's a sign of the pressure they're under um, there'll no doubt be more um, you know I think you know if you think about Helen Clark you know she really got stuck into John Key all the way back in 2008 and got quite nasty. And, um, you know, that's unfortunately the way Labor go and play things sometimes. But, look, we'll just um, stick to what we're doing, um, holding the government to account and putting out new policy. All right. Hey, Chris, lovely to have you on the platform for the first time. Have a talk to Christopher. Is it Christopher Luxon you want to be called? You don't want to do the Chris thing? 
Oh, I'm Chris Bishop. He's Christopher Lux. Oh, OK. <laughs> so you've got first dibs on the name Chris. I get it. In caucus, I get it. Uh, could you just tell him that, that we, we won't hurt him and he's welcome any time for a conversation? <laughs> Okay, I'll pass it on. All right, that is uh, Chris Bishop. He is the um, shadow leader of the House, third ranked in the National uh, Caucus. And we ended up talking about quite a lot of things there, didn't we? What did you think of Chris Bishop?